Welcome to the Elementor Pro. I'm Jared, and today we're going to talk about how to build a page that displays the blogs or the posts that are within your WordPress website. So I think this is an important thing to do rather than just have WordPress display blogs in its you know default way, because WordPress gives us this ability with Elementor to display them nicely. So for example, on this client website here, I have blogs displayed uh, in blocks here. And it's a nice view. It's much better than having an image and the title and a little bit of text and a read more. This definitely is a lot more attractive and looks more appealing, looks more professional as well. So how do we build something like this? Well, we're gonna go and add a new page. Of course, you need to have a website that has posts. And so I've got a website here, my blog that has several posts and we're gonna go ahead and create a blog page, just a real simple blog page in Elementor. So I'm gonna click Add New to add a new page. I'm going to title this page Blog. So we'll go ahead and uh, I'll just type in Blog. And over on the right-hand side, I wanna make sure and change this to Elementor Full Width. Um, and that's pretty much all I need to do. So I'm gonna hit Publish and we're gonna publish this page. And so now that I have it saved, we're gonna go ahead and open it up in Elementor. So this particular website doesn't have a whole lot. It's a very plain website. So the header and the footer of the website is very basic, but we're going to build out our blog section using Elementor. So we're going to need a section uh, and we're gonna add that section. I'm gonna add a heading to it and we'll call this Jared's blog and we'll go ahead and center it. And uh, I might wanna give it a little bit of padding. If you, if you needed a little bit of padding from the top of your website, you might wanna add that, but it seems to have a decent amount of padding already, so I'm not gonna go ahead and, and add that. I'll then add another section and we'll go into the elements. And there's a, a few different ways to do this based on uh, what, you, what you have available to you. If you're on Elementor's free version, then most likely you will need to go and use a WordPress widget and drop in a WordPress widget um, that uh, just allows you to add recent posts. So we'll just go ahead and look at that and uh, kind of see what that looks like. Mm, it's not very exciting. It's just essentially says recent posts, which we could change the title here. Um, uh, and then it has a certain amount of posts and we can display the date if we want to and that's the extent of it. It's not very exciting, and uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and delete this. So you are gonna need um, Elementor Pro in order to do this, and so in Elementor Pro, we have the posts element here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take this and drag it in, and you can see it's already made things look way better. And so we've got three columns here, which depending on the layout that you're looking for might be too much. Um, there's also different ways that you can skin this. We can go with a card layout, which is more consistent with the sample website that I showed you at the beginning of this video. And so now we've got a nice card layout. It's pulling in because I'm the author of this post. It's pulling in my Gravatar image from my WordPress user account and it's giving a title. It's giving the uh, first little blurb and a read more the date and the comments, and so this is really starting to look good. I can change the amount of columns between one and six, and so I could go to two, which gives me bigger images. I could also go to four, which puts a lot more in there and makes smaller images. I think this is starting to get a little cramped, um, so I might go with two or three. Keep in mind that we also want this page to be mobily responsive. So we have our responsive mode and we're looking and seeing what this looks like, seeing that uh, Elementor does go down to a single column and I like that. So we're not causing any problems there. Um, also looking at the information that's being pulled into this section and whether or not we need it. Do I need the comments and the date to be displayed? Well, if you're blogging often, then I recommend having the date displayed and having the comments. The date shows that the post was recent and the comment shows that there's interactions taking place and it also invites people to comment and, and makes them mindful of the fact that they can comment um, when they're done reading your post. Besides cards, we also have full content which full content is a little bit more of a traditional layout and it just displays the entire post there, which is definitely not what I typically would do 
um, you know, because it's just not, it doesn't make for an easy to read landing page for your, for your blogs. So cards is typically my favorite. Classic, not too bad, uh, but I like cards because it adds some separation. And if you've been paying attention at this time, uh, you know, end of summer 2021, if you look at Apple's website, if you look at all of the trendy websites out there, they're very card based and things are separated in cards and sections that are clear, clearly separated from the next element. And so I recommend going with cards. We could also choose how many are going to load per page. Uh, so if you want more than six, you know, don't go with seven if you're doing three wide because then you've got a wasted space here. So maybe we go nine instead so that we have um, we have a full grid all the way across of these three columns, which looks good. Uh, you know, if you're not using images, if you don't have a featured image set for your posts, then you could turn this off and it makes things look a little more simple, um, but it also makes them look pretty plain. I definitely like to use featured images um, and I just like the way that looks. Masonry also can be turned on, which masonry makes them not necessarily align perfectly. You can see here that the two posts in the middle are a little bit higher. And basically it just, it makes that card only as tall as it needs to be. And then the cards start to stagger and change periodically. And I don't think there's enough variation in size to make that look cool. And really all it does is it makes it look like I wasn't paying attention when I set up this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and set masonry to off. If you are in a smaller column size like this uh, with three columns, the image size being 640 by 640 is probably way too large. If you have a smaller image size here available, you might consider choosing a smaller image size. But because of how those images were uploaded at the time, WordPress created the smallest image size as 640. I would prefer an image size of like 300 for here, so that way I'm not creating a page that's gonna take a lot of time to load. And then there's also other elements that you can adjust here. Maybe you don't want your title or you don't want, uh, you want the excerpt to be shorter or longer. This excerpt in here, you can make that shorter or longer. Um, if you don't want the read more link there, you wanna change what it says from read more to something else, you can do that. You can have your blogs open in a new window instead of navigating away from this page. However, it's there's there's still, people are out still on whether or not opening things in a new tab or opening them in the current tab affects SEO. I don't know if it does or not, um, but I don't like to have somebody with like 20 tabs open because they were using my website. They can use the back button like an adult um, and you know that's just the best way to do it. I only open things in a new tab when I'm navigating somebody away from something uh, outside of my website. I want them to be able to get back to my website uh, when they close that tab. So that's just a best practice there. And then um, badge taxonomy, you can either use categories or tags, and that is the badge that shows up up here. And these are the categories that I have. So Notion, blog, newsletter, um, personal development, family, those are, uh, those are different categories that I have on my website and so those are showing and I could turn those badges off if you know they don't make sense for you. The avatar being your little image that shows up there, you can turn that on and off. That is something that pulls in from your, your account, your WordPress account on this website. And so if you need to customize that, you have to upload an image to Gravatar using the same email address that you uh, log into on WordPress. If you can't get that to work, then there are plugins that you can install that allow you to upload a, a default image. Uh, but I think that's a bit much to just accomplish that little task. We also have style adjustments here. We can set the column gap, the row, uh, we can adjust things on the card, such as the background color, border radius, all of that stuff. We can customize the look of the card, which is really cool. I won't go into deep detail there because you could just come in here and change things and see what it does and, uh, and, and make it look the way that you want it to look. 
So you can also change uh, things with the image here. We have a small image section that allows for spacing changes. And then we also have the overall card and what happens in its normal view and then what happens when you mouse over it. So for example, uh, normal and hover, there really isn't much you can change here except going in and adding some CSS filters such as blur, brightness, contrast, saturation, changing the hue, things that make it noticeable. I think the default is fine. It brightens it up just a little bit to let you know that you've moused over it. Uh, we can also change things like the badge position left and right, the background color of the badge. Maybe we don't like that green color and we want to go with you know, something more in line with our brand colors and so we could change that color there. We could change the text color if for some reason uh, when we change the background color of the um, uh, of the card, the text is not appearing uh, well, we can change that. And there are other adjustments that we can make there that you can go in and look at. But that is essentially how we create a blog page. And if we update this page, and then we go and view this page, so I'm just gonna go ahead and exit out of here and go and view this page. I have a lot more than nine blogs. And so uh, let's just go ahead and open this page. I have a lot more than nine blog entries on this website, so when we get to the bottom, we're not seeing any more. So on a, on a setup like this, you're going to want to add a way for people to get to more blog entries because it's not displaying more. It's only displaying a recent amount. And you can see on this particular website, I have a certain amount of blog entries, and then I also down at the bottom have uh, pagination enabled so that I can go and view the next nine or six or 12 blog entries or whatever uh, amount of entries. And so you'd wanna make sure that that is uh, something that you have enabled so that people can get to more. So down here, you can of course come in and enable pagination. I have it set to none, but I can go and add numbers. I can do load on click. I could do infinite scroll, and it's gonna change the way that this works. Uh, which is going to give your users an ability to see more blog entries as they scroll through the page. So this is how you add a blog page to your WordPress website using Elementor. Definitely makes for a much better experience than the traditional WordPress category archive, so I highly recommend it. Uh, definitely subscribe to our channel here. We're putting out three videos on Elementor every week, so subscribe. I've got a link down in the description below to my Elementor course, which will teach you everything that there is to know about Elementor. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much, and we'll see you back in the next one. Take care.